crypto has been catching a lot of bullets lately. We had Luna UST, FTX, BlockFi, Celsius, 3AC, and all that related carnage. Then our banking partner started failing, Silvergate, Silicon Valley Bank, Signature. Then we discovered that over $3 billion worth of the assets backing USDC were deposited at Silicon Valley Bank. This was problematic since the US FDIC only insures up to $250,000 worth. That kind of shortfall in crypto's second biggest stablecoin surely would have a ripple effect across crypto and especially across DeFi. Fortunately, it looks like we had built up a little bit of stored luck. This time, we were able to dodge the bullet. But there are some lessons in this near miss for Cardano's future. Ready? Let's go. Today, we're going to discuss the whole SVB signature saga from this weekend, how crypto was able to dodge the bullet, why this happened, and who's been adamantly predicting this for years, an opportunity for crypto, and what lessons Cardano should take from all this. If you're as confused as I am by the way this round seems to be propelling itself with either dust or mud, or if you're finding value in these videos each weekday, please consider delegating to the Army of Spies Stake Pool Ticker AOS. Well, well, it's been a busy weekend, guys. We, we've sort of seen a collision of the TradFi and the crypto world this, this weekend, not in a good way. We'll, we'll get into why this was actually predictable because of the differences between the crypto world and the TradFi world. But here's how everything actually played out. So there are a lot of articles around explaining this. I like the title of this one. How does a bank collapse in 48 hours? It does give us a pretty good timeline. So they explain what Silicon Valley Bank is, founded in 83. Silicon Valley Bank specializes in banking for tech startups, or at least it did. It provided financing for almost half of US venture-backed tech and healthcare companies. If you've worked at a tech startup, there's a very good chance you are very familiar with what, <laughs> with what Silicon Valley Bank actually does. So why did it fail? This article says SVB encountered a classic run on the bank. Here's how it went down. On Wednesday, SVB announced it had sold a bunch of securities at a loss and that it would also sell $2.25 billion in new shares to shore up its balance sheet. That triggered a panic among key venture capital firms who reportedly advised companies to withdraw their money from the bank. And you can imagine, just like with tech startup, just like it would happen with regular retail consumers tech startups are going to do the same thing. They're going to go and all try to pull their money out, which is exactly what, what happened. The bank stock began plummeting Thursday morning, and by the afternoon, it was dragging other bank shares down with it as investors began to fear a repeat of the 2008 financial crisis. By Friday morning, trading in SVB shares was halted, and it had abandoned efforts to quickly raise capital or find a buyer. California regulators intervened, shutting the bank down and placing it in receivership under the FDIC. You might remember back to your junior high economics class where they explained to you that the FDIC is the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. So here's the important thing that's going to come up. The FDIC insures depositors in U.S. Bank up to a certain threshold. If you deposit money in a U.S. Bank and that bank fails, it's insured with the FDIC, but only up to $250,000 per depositor per insured bank for each account ownership category. So we've got 250K to work with here. This is a pretty serious problem if you're a gigantic stable coin that far exceeded that 250K threshold. That's exactly the situation that stablecoin USDC found itself in this weekend. We've talked about it before, but USDC was actually issued by a joint venture of Circle and Coinbase called Center. But you'll find in a lot of these articles, they just reference Circle. And in this particular article, they call all this a $43 billion nightmare. And then either for SEO purchase purposes or just to be as sensational as possible, they go through and name every cryptocurrency in the top 10. Bitcoin, Ethereum, BNB, XRP, Cardano, Dogecoin, Polygon, and Solana, even though the article is pretty much just about USDC. But there are some pretty good quotes in here. 
that tell you exactly what's going on. Silicon Valley Bank is one of six banking partners Circle uses for managing the 25% portion of USDC reserves held in cash, Circle posted. So you know USDC is going to have a certain market cap at any one time. I think it was something like $43 billion when all this started. And they're supposed to have assets backing that entire $43 billion stored in you know various types of assets in this case 25 percent of those assets were in cash and the cash is going to be held at banks and they're saying svb svb was one of those six banks they get a little more specific down here circle had 3.3 billion of the 40 billion backing at stablecoin deposited at svb here's the problem like we described earlier FDIC deposits are only insured up to 250K. Here, for some reason, even though they spelled the name out correctly, Forbes Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, Forbes still try to abbreviate that FIDC. And down here, they repeat it FIDC. Good job, Forbes. At least you got the 250K threshold correct. This was obviously a big problem for USDC because if you're only insured up to 250K, you don't want to have over three billion in a bank like that of course you're asking the question why would they ever put so much in that bank if they were only insured up to 250k because like we talked about the bank has been around since the 80s and it never had a problem like this in fact we haven't had any problems like this at all we haven't had a bank this big fail like this at all since the 2008 financial crisis and this particular bank has been around since the 80s and it banks, you know, like half of all tech startups. So pretty established place to park a bunch of money like this. Nobody ever expected that Silicon Valley Bank would have this kind of, would experience this kind of failure. So this was a big problem for USDC, but it was also in the case of crypto, luckily for crypto, luckily it was also a problem for federal regulators. So starting uh, earlier today on Sunday, you'll be watching this on Monday probably, but on Sunday we started seeing headlines like this, US officials way protecting all deposits at Silicon Valley Bank. So there were enough, there were enough large companies, startups, you know, large startups, we'll say startups, you know, kind of by their nature aren't necessarily large, but we'll say a bunch of prominent startups with money stored at SVB, a bunch of very rich individuals with money tied up in SVB. And it was enough of a problem that all of a sudden the conversation became not should the FDIC, you know, uh, the FDIC is insuring up to 250k the conversation became should they just protect all the deposits all the money of all the depositors and there's there's some moral hazard uh issues here because you could say hey um if you everybody knew that the deposits were only supposed to be insured up to 250k if you still bail out all the depositors then it's kind of like banks can can take as much risk as they want, pay depositors as much as they want, and they don't have to worry about the depositors being out of cash at the end of the day because the FDIC is still just going to swoop in and protect all the depositors. So people would argue that in the future, this is going to make banks take much bigger risks than they should because they know worst case scenario, the depositors aren't going to be out the money even if the entire bank fails. I'm sure these are the kinds of discussions they were having all day today. And it looked like it was sort of a joint conversation, a joint discussion between the Federal Reserve, Jay Powell here, the Treasury, Janet Yellen, and also the FDIC. Things weren't looking too good when this headline came out. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen says U.S. government won't bail out Silicon Valley Bank. But she's talking about an actual bailout here like the kinds of bailouts we had after the 2008 financial crisis, where they actually bail out the bank itself. That's a different issue than whether or not they're going to bail out the depositors, whether or not they're going to make the depositors whole. So here she's saying they're not going to save the bank SVB, but the issue is still outstanding. Would they save the depositors? And among those, USDC. This was a little scary because USDC is all over DeFi. We, we see the use of USDC throughout DeFi, especially in the EVM world, and it's 
also a huge part of the Coinbase ecosystem, which is a gigantic fiat on-ramp, at least in the Western world. So if USDC were to suddenly lose something like, you know, $3.3 billion of its of its uh, backed backing assets, this this could be a huge problem for all of crypto and especially DeFi. And we did start to see USDC depegging. All of a sudden it left that $1 peg and it was worth less and less and less as time went on. So this was a huge catastrophe in the making. We've already experienced this recently with Luna UST. Obviously, that was an algorithmic stable coin, whereas USDC is an asset-backed stable coin. But when those stable coins leave their peg, it's kind of the same result regardless of how they got there. Simultaneously, they were also taking bids to sell SVB off to somebody. The FDIC began an auction process for SVB on Saturday and hoped to identify a winning bidder Sunday afternoon with final bids expected by 2 p.m. Eastern. Selling SVB to a healthy institution remains the preferred solution, officials have told Congress. Most bank failures are resolved that way and enable depositors to avoid losing any money. While all that was going on, we also saw New York state regulators shut down Signature Bank, another crypto-friendly bank, and this was the third largest U.S. bank failure ever. So think about that for a second. This was the third largest. Silicon Valley Bank was the second largest. The largest ever was Washington Mutual in 2008. But we've had two crypto-friendly banks fail in just the last couple of days, basically the last 48 hours, and they were the second and third largest U.S. bank failures of all time. Between these two banks, Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank, there was a lot of crypto money deposited. We would have been waking up Monday morning to, I think, a, a huge number of announcements of crypto crypto institutions, crypto companies that we all know and love, basically having having no cash. That was until this headline came out. Late on Sunday night, they finally made a decision. U.S. says all deposits at Feld Bank will be available Monday. That was a reference to Silicon Valley Bank. And they said they are also extending those protections to Signature Bank of New York. So they decided to basically ensure all of the deposits at Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank. This is a bullet dodged for crypto. We would have had not just the problems with USDC, but a lot of other crypto companies with money deposited at these two banks. And I'm sure in a lot of cases, just like with USDC, those deposits would have exceeded 250,000. This would have been a huge blow to crypto. It would have been a huge problem for DeFi, a huge problem for a lot of other crypto companies. Luckily, they had to bail them out. So we've talked a lot about how the current administration, they don't seem so crazy about crypto. Why would they bail out these two banks and do us this huge favor? Because it wasn't for us. Because these were the second and third largest bank failures of all time, of, of, any, of any type. Having completely nothing to do with crypto, these would have been the second and third largest bank failures of all time behind only Washington Mutual in 2008. So what went wrong here? These were both crypto-friendly banks. Is crypto some kind of poison that doomed these banks? No. What went wrong here is something that Caitlin Long has been predicting for years. She's been screaming as loud as she could for years that these settlement times in crypto are way too fast. And banks are used to these very long settlement times. In traditional finance, settlement might number in the days, whereas in crypto, it could number in seconds. So you're going to see crypto moving way too fast for the traditional banking system to handle it, and banks were going to fail. She's been saying this for years and years and years. And that's exactly why Custodia Bank, which she founded, is a Wyoming special purpose depository institution, a Wyoming speedy bank where they have to back every single dollar deposited by their customers with money in the bank. They actually have to hold that amount of money or more in the bank if they're a Wyoming speedy bank. This is not the case with these banks that failed today. The problem was fractional reserve banking, where they only hold a tiny fraction of the amount they owe their customers. So of course, with crypto, because the settlement times are so fast, you're going to see all of the customers 
leaving assets all at once very quickly and traditional banks can't handle that. That's what happened with these banks. Caitlin Long says, I mean, you know, these were bank runs and certainly crypto was a factor. I'm not saying that all of the, all of the customers who withdrew their assets in Silicon Valley bank or signature were all crypto entities, but certainly these, these, this thing played out exactly like uh, Caitlin Long predicted. She says, the unfortunate demise of Silvergate, Silicon Valley Bank, and Signature underscore the danger of facing any tra uh, fractional reserve bank when all its demand depositors come back to claim their money at the same time and the bank does not have adequate cash. The problem is not digital assets. It is that the risky business models and practices of these banks went unnoticed and unregulated until it was too late. The U.S. urgently needs to put in place safe business models for the banks that bank the fast-moving industries like that proposed by Custodia. Custodia proposed to hold a dollar and eight cents in cash for every dollar deposited by its customers. I'm hoping the federal regulators understand this sooner rather than later. You can't you can't do the fractional reserve banking thing with crypto. Crypto moves too fast, and it's hard money. It's fundamentally incompatible with this fractional reserve banking thing that has never really made sense to anybody. Hopefully they see this and they, for, for banks that deal with crypto, hopefully they follow something that looks a lot more like the Wyoming speedy bank model. So what are the lessons here for Cardano? I think there are a few big things. The first thing is that we now know algorithmic stable coins can fail and asset backed stable coins can fail. And we know specifically that asset backed stable coins can fail when you try to marry them to custodianship of those assets in the fractional reserve banking world. Crypto, you could argue, was a reaction to central bank money printing and the whole fractional reserve banking system. It doesn't fundamentally, it doesn't make sense to marry those two things together when the one was meant as a solution to the other. But here we are with stable coins. We're giving the assets backing those stable coins back to the fractional reserve banking system. That seems to be pretty problematic. The other thing, the other lesson here is probably to think about what would have happened if we hadn't dodged this bullet, if they, if the Fed, the Federal Reserve, and the Treasury and FDIC had decided not to bail out the depositors of Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank, what would have happened? Well, all the ecosystems that relied heavily on USDC probably would have had big problems. But Cardano is not infested with USDC and Tether like the rest of crypto is. I mean, in the short term, sure, all of the top 10 cryptocurrencies are highly correlated and we would have hurt in the short term. But you have to ask the question, because we are not so reliant on USDC, what would have happened over medium and longer term timelines in Cardano? We might have come out of this looking a lot better than some of those some of those ecosystems that are so strongly reliant on USDC. So our Cardano being different might have been a way for us to avoid a lot of the contagion that would have spread like wildfire from USDC losing such a large chunk of its backing assets. There might be a huge upside in terms of uh, contagion containment, contagion avoidance in Cardano to us not being just like Ethereum, to us not bridging all of those EVM world assets over into Cardano. Being an island isn't all good, but avoiding contagion, if this had gone the other way, there might be some upside there. Finally, here's an interesting opportunity for all of crypto and all this. So CZ reposts an article from some time ago that says Binance considers buying banks, bridging gap between crypto and TradFi. And CZ posted, is it time yet? Not sure. You're probably aware that Elon Musk has posted similar things, kind of pondering the question of whether, whether or not uh, he could buy something like a Silicon Valley bank. And of course, that's probably in the context of a lot of the rumors that he's, you know, largely sort of thinking of Twitter as kind of like a payment system as opposed to just a messaging system. But I think this could be a pretty big opportunity for crypto. If somebody like a CZ were to pick up one of these failing banks, I'm not saying that would ever be allowed, that the feds would ever allow it, or, you know, that it could, it could happen, you know, just on economic grounds necessarily. But 
if somebody in crypto, deep in crypto like CZ, were to pick up one of these banks and all of a sudden we had a banking partner in crypto who was not only friendly to crypto, but one of us, that might create a very different dynamic in the run up to the next bull market. I hope you had a great weekend and I'll talk to you tomorrow.